Hi, I'm Don from Don Drones On, and welcome to my monthly report on my Starlink experience. June is month 15 of using Starlink. Definitely getting worried about the deteriorating speeds, but I'm still loving it. So in this month's report, I'll share my usual performance metrics and then talk a bit about this serious battle brewing over the 12 gigahertz radio band. You've probably seen this in your newsfeed, but what does it really mean? Well, let's get into it. Let's discuss this 12 gig battle first, right up front. There are basically two sides here. Mobile phone carriers wanting more radio bandwidth, and then companies like SpaceX who use this 12 gig band for satellite to ground communications, which in fact is what the band is designated for. The problem is that these new 12 gig mobile phone systems would massively interfere with the satellite communications. And folks like us who use Starlink would be utterly hosed. The interference could be so bad that our Starlink systems would no longer work, which is terrible. But surely you say government agencies like the FCC in the United States wouldn't allow this kind of nonsense. Well, first of all, stop calling me surely. And secondly, there is actually a risk that this could go ahead because the mobile phone folks called MVDDS, obviously, standing for Multi-Channel Video Distribution and Data Service, have filed a technical report with the FCC showing the interference would be absolutely minimal, nothing to worry about. SpaceX, however, has pointed out massive flaws in the MVDDS report. For example, and this is just the first one, MVDDS made the assumption that 80% of Starlink dishes are mounted on the ground and only 20% on rooftops. Obviously an assumption wildly in their favor, since roof height or higher mounts, which likely represent, what, 8-90% of the cases, are much more subject to interference from other radio sources than dishes close to the ground. And there are five other assumptions that SpaceX calls serious errors in the report. And surprise, surprise, these errors all minimize the risk of interference in favor of the MVDSS guys. So SpaceX did their own study, corrected the erroneous assumptions, and concluded that if the 12 gigahertz plan goes ahead, anyone within 21 kilometers of these 12 gig antennas would have no Starlink service 74% of the time. And even if you were 32 kilometers away from the cell tower, you would have massively degraded service. In other words, your Starlink system would be garbage. Now that's pretty serious. One thing I should point out, because many of the news reports sharing this don't get into the details, is that yes, this applies to 5G technology, but current 5G mobile systems are not in the 12 gig band. They're typically at much higher frequencies and so don't interfere with Starlink service. The issue is only related to companies trying to take advantage of spectrum license they all, licenses they already have that are in the 12 gig band and are now trying to convert them into mobile phone services. If you want to read the very technical SpaceX report, there's a link in the description below this video. If you just want the sound bite, mobile phone services should not be allowed to enter the 12 gig radio band. Let's hope this battle is resolved so we don't lose the service that many of us are only now starting to enjoy. Speaking of enjoying, let's get into my performance metrics. First up is dropout events per hour. I define a dropout as an outage over 11 seconds, enough to be noticeable on an MS Teams or Zoom call, but typically having no impact at all on streaming services like YouTube or Netflix. Well, as you can see, my dropout events were nearly twice as bad in June compared to May, with nearly all dropouts attributed to obstructions. It's pretty obvious that as the leaves dropped off my nearby trees in the autumn, I had fewer obstruction outages, and as the leaves have come out again, my obstruction outages have increased. Not nearly as bad as last summer, presumably because of more satellites being available, but quickly rising to be a, a problem, I'll say. Over the past couple of weeks, I've experienced annoying dropouts in almost every online work meeting I was in. 
Fortunately, these are usually very short outages, a few seconds at the most, but still pretty bad. So I'm once again considering, just considering, moving my dish to a better location on my roof. Unfortunately, I have a lot more pressing issues on my plate right now, so any kind of move is unlikely to happen before the fall. I guess we'll see. My second metric shows much the same story. This measure is of the total outage minutes per day. In June, I averaged a bit over five minutes downtime per day, the worst it has been since last October. Still better than the summer of 2021, but moving in the wrong direction. Next, let's look at speed and latency. Both download and upload average speeds slumped again this month. I made 77 speed tests over the month, and the average download speed was 82 megabits per second. Average upload speed dropped from 9 megabits per second in May to 7 in June. Now, these speeds are very likely being affected by my obstruction problems. If an obstruction causes a packet to be lost and then retransmitted, then the speed will appear lower. Average ping times were also worse in June, with an average of 56 milliseconds, up from 49 in May. By the way, all of my measurements are made to the same speed test site, and my computer is hardwired through to the dish, so there are no variations due to local Wi-Fi performance. We can see variations in the speed tests by plotting them in a histogram form. Here we see the poor speed performance very clearly, with a ton of speed tests coming in under 50 megabits per second. The slowest one was 6. On the other end of the scale, my fastest measurement was 195. Compared to the past four months, we're seeing that same pattern repeating since April. Unlike March, when we had a nice peak in the 50 to 100 megabits range, our upload speed histogram is a bit more positive, with a clear peak in the 5 to 10 megabit per second range. I like the peak, but I would prefer it to be in the 10 to 15 range, at least. Well, there we have it, my June 2022 Starlink report. Performance continuing to slowly degrade, certainly partly due to my obstructions, but by the way, I'm still thrilled with the service. It's fast, normally working just fine, and night and day compared to my old landline. And hopefully I've explained enough about this hot news item regarding the 12 gig band that you'll be able to take the right stand if you're in any way involved in the debate. Just say no to 12 gig mobile phone systems. I hope you found this video interesting. Be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell for my future videos. And there's a buy me a coffee link in the description if you would like to support my channel that way. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.